Okay, here we are with Excel 4 capstone exercise. This is all about a bunch of records for uh, tech support calls that have been received by a company. So we are going to get right in and do a bunch of the things that we've done in the mid-level. So we're done step one by opening up our file. Step two, we're going to freeze the panes. So the first row containing column headings uh, or row five on the worksheet remains static when scrolling. So uh, now we can't use the shortcut and freeze panes just to do the top row. We have to manually choose it. So if you want uh, it to freeze everything from one to five, highlight row six, the whole thing, view, freeze panes, and then choose the freeze panes item. So now you'll see that it put the solid line above where we had selected and we scroll down and it froze that top pane for us. So we are good with step two. Step three, convert the data to a table and name it support calls. Okay, so insert table, selected everything for us, hit OK, and then we need to name it support calls in the table tools design area so that's it and then we have to apply gold table style medium 12 so table tools design we got to go find medium 12 which i think is this one and there we go so we're done step three step four remove duplicate records okay so table tools design remove duplicates and we want to have everything checked here which it is we'll hit okay and it found three unique items that got rid of. So I hit OK there. So that's done for step four. Step five, add a new column to the table called duration. All right, so let's go to the top because I know I need to work there for a bit. So let's type duration in column I. It automatically includes it in the table, includes it in the formatting. Done step five. Step six, create a formula using unqualified structured references to calculate the days required to resolve the incident. Okay, so the formula is date resolved minus date created, so equals. So we want date resolved, so that's that, minus date created, hit enter, and it fills all the way down automatically. Step six is done. Next thing we want to do in step seven is add a total row to display the average days required to resolve an issue. So I'm going to go to my table tools design area, click on total row. And now if I go to the bottom, I want to change this to average. This is total right now. So average. So average is 17. Again, I'm going to shrink up the decimal places because it is kind of unruly. So there we are, we're done with step seven. Now we need to do some custom sorting of our data here. So I'm going to click inside my table and hit data and then sort. So it's automatically pulled my data because we're working in a table. The first thing we want to do is sort uh, agent name in alphabetical order. So I'm going to sort by agent name alphabetical a to z perfect next we want to add a second level to sort by description so i'm going to add level choose description um, and we want to do a custom sort order as follows so that means in the order we have to go to custom list and i already have mine done so new list and if you Type in everything like that. With, so it should be commas, so let me do it. I'll do it. So first one is won't power on, comma, uh, virus, comma, printing issues, comma, software update, comma, forgotten, whoop, forgotten password. And you can hit add. So mine is already there. So I'll hit OK after I have it selected from the left-hand list. And now it should populate in here um, what you've done. The next thing we need to do is add a third level to the sort. So I'm going to add level and choose duration. Okay. 
and it's supposed to be smallest to largest, which we're good with there. So we'll hit OK. So the next thing is um, uh, it has a notes for Mac users. So create a custom list, go to the Excel menu, click preferences in the dialog box, click custom list. Uh, and then there's some further instructions there. So just please, if you're on a Mac computer, check out the instruction sheet for details on uh, your modifications, okay? Uh, the next thing we wanna do, so we're done step eight. We're gonna move on to step nine. So step nine, filter the table to only display closed incidents as indicated in the status column. Okay, so here's the status column. And I'm going to choose the drop down there because I can get to the quick filter. And I'm going to uncheck the select all because I only want closed. So I'm going to make sure closed is the only thing there and then hit OK. And now only closed will show up there. So step nine is done. Step 10, use quick analysis to apply default data bars, conditional formatting, solid blue fill to the duration column, I6 to 85. OK, so I'm going to highlight. I6 to 85. And then I'm going to use the data bar. So if I click on quick analysis here, and under formatting, I'll find data bars right there. So if I click that, now I've got my data bars conditional formatting there. So that's perfect. Um, it also notes that Mac users on the Home tab click conditional formatting, point to data bars, and under solid fill, click blue data bar. So if you're on a Mac, that's your modification for step 10. Um, step 11, we need to create a new conditional formatting rule that applies red fill and bold font to incident, which is the uh, range on the far left, that required 30 or more days to resolve. Be sure to use relative cell references in the conditional format formula. Okay, so we want it to apply to this column data. So I'm gonna highlight that. And then I'm going to go home, conditional formatting, and make a new rule. So I'm going to use a formula to do this because we have to have Excel tell us which ones were greater than uh, 30 days. So I'm going to go use a formula. And then we have to create our formula. So I'm just going to scroll to the top. So row six should be showing. So I want to know if uh, this duration is greater than uh, 30 days, because I think it's 30 days, okay, 30 days or more. So it's greater than or equal to 30, okay? And again, it told us make sure you don't use, uh, make sure you use relative references. So make sure to get rid of your dollar sign. So our formula should be good there. So now we have to choose what to do with our format. So I'll hit format and we want our font to be bold. So I'll do that in the font tab. And then we want our fill to be red. So I'll fill tab, red, hit okay. All right, so that's what it's gonna look like if that decision is true there. Um, so let's hit okay. And let's see if anything worked. Okay, so this one's above 30, this one's above 30, and now it's dark red with bold. So it did work. Good news. So that's step 11 done. Next thing we want to do in step 12 is change page break. So page two begins with the computer ID column or column E. So if we go to the view tab, we want to go to our page break preview here so we can see where the page splits. So I'll do that. And we can see that currently page one ends including column E, but we're told we want to have column E on page two. So I'm going to click on, so you make sure that you're hovering over the page break, the dash blue line, and your arrow cursor shows up and you can just drag it. So now page two includes column E, which is perfect. That's what we wanted. So step 12 is done. Step 13, we want to change the print scale to 85%. So when we print it, everything's smaller than it was to start with. Uh, so first thing I'm going to get out of this page break preview. So I'm going to go back to normal view in the view menu. And I'm going to page layout here. And here's scale here. So we want it to be 85%. So you can just type in 
85% and hit tab there. You won't notice anything on your screen, uh, but if you went to print preview, you'd see that it's smaller than how we started. So that's it for step 13. Step 14, add a custom footer, the same custom footer we always do. So page setup, dialog box, header footer, custom footer, name, sheet code, file code, okay, okay. And that's it for step 14. Um, I'm just gonna do a print preview to see what mine looks like. Do that so you can see it shrank a little bit. We've got our footer here. The page break is proper. So we are all good and that's the end of the exercise.